is exceptional. I've had to train to get really very, very proficient. Gold medalist and Paralympic champion representing New Zealand. You're always adjusting and adapting to conditions, and that's the thing that young players perhaps don't quite realise these days. You're listening to the Hyundai High Performance Hour. Welcome into the show, Andrew Dewhurst still with me and uh, the night watchman Jason Ryan joins me. Uh, he disappeared during the golf show because he had to pick up our guest. How are you, Jason? You right? Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. Thank you for our golfing experience today. Yeah, well, I tell you what, if it's wet around Auckland, there's one place you can go. There's a few, but uh, Mirawai will never let you down. Yeah, unfortunately, the wind was a little strong for me today. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, you don't need those headphones, mate. You're right. It's all right. We're already getting quizzical looks from our guest. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it was uh, most enjoyable. Just a pity there were a few par sevens on the golf course today. Mm, I think I had a par eight. Into the breeze. Into the breeze, but never mind. Um, our guest on the show is uh, none other than uh, Ali Williams, who, of course, just recently retired from international rugby, but is still very much a part of the Auckland scene, playing for the Blues and, in fact, uh, captaining the Blues in this uh, current uh, Super Rugby campaign. Uh, it's been a long career. It's been, a, in some ways, a surprising career when you consider that uh, he didn't take up the game until he was aged uh, 17, uh, but clearly took to it very quickly. And, uh, as we know, he's had a wonderful career in the All, Bla All Blacks, but also uh, at a provincial level, and not just in this part of the world, in the north. Of course, he had a very successful stint in your hometown, Jason. Was that OK? Was he accepted down there when he turned up? Oh, he was well-loved. Well-loved, and it was sad to see him disappear, to be fair. Yeah, well, it helped that he was a part of a winning uh, culture down there. Ali Williams joins us. Ali, welcome in. Good evening, lads. How are we? Uh, very well indeed. Thanks for your time. Um, interesting week for you. I just said to you off air, how are you feeling? The uh, the All Blacks are in camp. The team's about to be named tomorrow morning. How are you feeling? A bit, bit funny? Bit no, different? I feel, uh, feel good, actually. I'm, um, you know, I thought it would be a lot harder than what it is, but I think that just goes to show that it's the right decision and... You know, the, the, the time's right to, to do something else. Um, but, uh, look, I'm, I think the best part about it is now I can become a genuine All Black fan. And, you know, I have been doing that while I've been injured. But uh, you've also got one, one foot in the door. So, that was good. It's an interesting turn of phrase. And you hear sports people say it when they retire or long after they've retired that you know you know the time is right. How do you know? What are, what are the factors? What is it? Is it something tangible, or is it just a whole bunch of stuff that suddenly you know it's the right time? I don't think it's anything tangible. I think it's just a feeling you get in your gut. Um, a when you've you've been around them, or or B when you when you haven't been around it, and you you can sense that. Uh, look, it's it's not the same as what it has been. It's it doesn't have the same meaning for me. And look at. That's that's not the, the case with me, you know. I still love the All Black jersey. I'd, I'd do anything for it. But um, you, you just get a feeling that there's there's a time and a place and and the right time to, to move away. And I think that's one of the hardest parts as as a career goes on is when is the right time to step down from something or, or move on and, and take on a new challenge. And as a, who knows if it's the right time? Oh, well, I mean, you're, you're the only judge of that. And, I mean, that's... Uh, I. I for me, that's always the case that uh, the only person who's uh, got the right to uh, critique the timing of their retirement is the person calling the shots. I mean, who are we to say so-and-so should retire, sitting in the media? Even the fans, I'm not sure they have that right. It, it's your the decision. We do say a lot of things, though. Oh, we do. We yeah. do. We do. We say a lot of things, mate. <laughs> right or wrong. Yeah. <laughs> we do say a lot of things. <laughs> um, but it is your, it's very personal to you, isn't it? It's your call. Yeah, it, is, it, it was my call. And, um, you know, look, I've, I've got... Great mates in that team, um, you know. Chuck the idea past them, and some of them were shocked and said, "You know, you're really thinking that way." And then, you know, even spoke, speaking to the coach, it's sort of I think, you know, okay. Um, but yeah, deep down inside, as you see, you just you just get a feeling, and you and I think a lot of sportsmen, what they do, and throughout their whole careers, they just go with a gut feeling and, and I suppose that's what happens when, when the time comes to, to pull pin. Let's talk about uh, early days for, for Ali Williams. As I mentioned there, you didn't really start playing rugby until 17. I got it. Is that correct? Is that true? That's often talked about, often said. Second 15, where? At King's College? Yep. Yep. I um, Look, I I watched the game. I, I played in the backyard with, with the neighbours and things like that, but I never committed to a rugby team until I was sort of 16, 17. And that was when I was at school, and um, I just I just had a ball. I thoroughly enjoyed it. There was that camaraderie, but yet that physicality. And you know, I think it, 
for me it was more it became more of a team sport rather than football or soccer whatever you want to call it um, you relied on your mates more but you could bring them together a lot a lot more in a game of rugby than you can in, in a game of football so surprising to me in a way and and again uh, I hope the research is right but your dad was a pretty handy player wasn't he yeah he was all right he played for um, Blackheath over in, in England um, he says he's probably better than what he was, which, um, <laughs> which, which is pretty standard, isn't it? So um, you'll get there, mate. You'll yeah, get there. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Uh, I actually had lunch with um, Tony Woodcock today, and he he said, oh, "What about that time you ran that sixty meter trial?" Well, it was actually only 40 metres, but it's already stretched out to 60 in a week, so I'm loving this stuff. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It'll be, it'll be 100 metres before you know it. Start yeah, start uh, <laughs> stretching the tails, all right, that's for sure. But So, I mean, as, as a kid, though, was there any pressure on you? Obviously not. To, to play rugby, you were, you, you were, what was the family environment like? You were just no, free to go and play whatever you wanted. Yeah, I, I had no pressure. As, as a family, we, um, we basically had that attitude, just give everything a crack and um, you know, we still live by a sort of motto: look, if 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 you're doing something you love, then you never work a day in your life. And uh, you know, it just got to that situation where Dad was driving us around sort of five or six sports because my brother and I just didn't have a clue which one we wanted to do, but we loved them all. And then it's finally, a Kiwi as it, story, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. As, it, as it gets to a, your older age, you sort of start having to pick which one. And and rugby was was that. Where, where are you going to ask you to put some modesty aside here? Yeah. Um, and let's let's start these stories, all right? Let's start these stories now. Were you pretty handy at most sport? Were you a, a naturally talented kid? And when it when it came to sport, yeah, I'd say so. Um, I, w- I wouldn't say that I was the best, but I think I had that um, that competitive streak. Which even though I'd say I didn't have the best forehand in tennis, I'd chase everything back and and hopefully hit it back over the net. Um, cricket was the same. I was probably one of the uh, the ugliest looking batsmen, but um, I found a way to get the ball over or along the ground over the uh, the the, the uh, what do you call them the white picket fence. Huh? Um, but uh, look, I just I just loved it. I loved the camaraderie. I loved the challenge, and um, I think more than anything, what makes a sportsman these days is not so much the physical attributes because everyone trains that, and you know, there's three or four percent difference between what your gym programs you do and all that sort of. It's actually your mental attitude. And um, I think if if we're going to look and be serious, that's one of the areas that young kids are, are missing out on because they're going straight from from schoolboy rugby straight into these you know big time. And there's no club stuff now, nah, eh? and they don't they just don't have that that ability to learn how the mental graph goes. So um, I mean that that was my biggest attribute, and I think it probably still is. Uh, and and I guess that helps you survive some of the uh, the highs and the lows of a, a very successful career. Some of which we'll talk about as we uh, chat with Ali Williams on the high performance hour. More from uh, Ali in a moment or two, and uh, talk about those early days going from uh, second fifteen rugby at uh, King's College, and uh, what within I think about five years into the All Blacks. More in a moment. Time. It's a precious commodity. If you're thinking about construction or bridging finance, land development, spec builds, commercial loans or debt consolidation, choose DBR Property Financiers. First mortgage finance providers that use speed, simplicity and flexibility to put time back on your side. Talk to your mortgage broker now. Complete a 10-minute online application at dbronline.co.nz or call DBR on 0800 555 My new fridge. My home entertainment system. Whatever the next big thing in your life, buy it online on Layby with MyLayby.com. Very flexible, very convenient, all the advantage of online and Layby, plus free delivery. My honeymoon. My baby. My new computer. It's the best way to get those big things in life. Make your Layby MyLayby.com. Services. Hi, Joe from Venlory Blind Services. We're taking 30% off our entire range, custom made to measure. That's 30% off Venetians and rollers, off woodens and creation wood blinds. 30% off the lot with a free measuring quote. Call 0800 999 or visit vlr.co.nz. Venlory Blind Services. If it doesn't say service, it's not. Radio Sport and Canterbury of New Zealand present. 
trophy, cricket. The best one-day nations, and somehow we made the cut. Oh, very good. The Black Caps' first game is Sunday night, 9.30, and we've got ball-by-ball action live from Cardiff as they take on the might of Sri Lanka. Do tight. Oh, don't worry, Meryl J. Fernando, we will. Trophy on Radio Sport. The Hyundai High Performance Hour with Andrew Dewhurst. Proudly brought to you by Hyundai New Zealand. Welcome into the show, Andrew Dewhurst with you, Jason Ryan with me in studio and uh, we had a call earlier, didn't we Jason, out at the garrison tonight, uh, Dave Hickey I think saying that uh, Francois Borta was out at the garrison having dinner and he's there to watch the State of Origin he, tonight. He is, he is, I'm heading there after the show tonight to watch the Origin, so... Uh, Go Queensland. Correct, Queensland. correct oh, there, I, I think the Maroons are going to, well hopefully kick ass, three game series, so... It'd be nice for the first one. Yeah. Cameron Smith's statement didn't say they played that best last uh, in the last series, but but still, still won. won. But still won. That yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. Isn't it? It's it is a tough place to win though in uh, in Sydney. Yeah, Michael Jennings going to come in with a flying right hook again. You reckon? Spark it all up. <laughs> There'll be some biff. There's got to be. It's got to be. Yeah. You're hoping there is. There won't yeah. be. There won't this be. This is going to be interesting though. You know, everyone watches the Origin for that first kick and run back. Yep. There's no shoulder charge. So what's going to happen? Is it going to lose its sting? I've I got to admit, I used to, and I know we're digressing here, but I used to watch, when I was younger, State of Origin, if there was no biff in the first 10 minutes, I used to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I'd watch yeah. it for the first 10, no biff gone. Yeah. yeah, some of the, I mean, Mark Guy made a career on it, didn't he? Oh, um, yeah. With some of the Origin hits, but uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see, and we'll have you out of here, mate, you'll be, you'll be back. You got my sky, have you figured that out yet? No, no. <laughs> no I'm, a simple, I'm a simple human being. <laughs> Ali Williams, our guest on the uh, Hyundai High Performance Hour as we uh, talk uh, the life and times of. So it, it really was about five years, wasn't it, from playing second 15 rugby at school to playing for the All Blacks. That is a massive, massive sort of a transition in a short space of time. Yeah, it was pretty quick. Um, you know, I'd, I think I was just riding emotion. I... Uh, I didn't go to university after my last year at school and um, I just concentrated on rugby and, and, and working and then sort of Wayne Pivak was the first one to, to pick me up and, and notice me um, by my school coaches which actually went back to uh, Kings last night and presented their uh, their hats or caps they call it because nice. they got a big uh, Kings grammar game this weekend so um, cool. you know, I said to them last night well that's actually the start of where my rugby career kicked off, you know, playing in front of 5,000 people. And you know, this schoolboy rugby is just getting bigger and bigger, and it's it's one of the platforms that unfortunately might be taking over uh, club rugby. And But, I mean, it's a good base, and you're seeing a lot of potential talent come out of there. But then, um, yeah, Wayne Pivak picked me up, and uh, from there it sort of it, it got to a stage where I just loved playing the game, and I was learning so much. I, look, I, I didn't know how to hit a ruck. I, I didn't know what to do, and I was just learning and learning. And then um, a guy by the name of Graham Henry came along, and in 2002, he was with Auckland. He said I wasn't good enough and dropped me. And then in 2003, he dropped me from the Blues, said I wasn't good enough. I mean, by drop, I mean dropped me for a game. And then in 2004... Uh, when he was all black coach, he dropped me and said I probably wasn't good enough. And, There's a uh, bit of a pattern emerging here. Big pattern. <laughs> um, but I think... You know, if I'm going to be honest, I think it's things like that that, that have made my career because you know, he, he brought me down to, to where I needed to be to, to, to make the improvements. And um, you know, at the end of the season, he might tell me something that I don't want to hear. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> were you always a lock? I mean, from those first games of rugby in the second 15 at Kings, were you always a lock? No, I, I did start at um, number 10 because I was a soccer player and I oh, thought that I was... Are you serious? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I, well, I thought I could... Guide and generally course you did. around. Of course you did. Um, Talk your way through it. Had a stint at halfback there for a while, and um, and then the reality came that I was getting taller and a bit more uncoordinated and hit the line-outs probably best. So so after school you, uh, you went to Ponsonby? Yep. Straight into Ponsonby, and did you make the senior team straight away, or you played junior rugby there? No, I chose to play uh, under-21s. Um, I had a guy there that said, look, a year at under age group will, will be good for you and then straight into senior rugby after that. And what took you to Ponsonby? Was that the feeder club for the school or your local area or, or was somebody take you there? No, it's my local area. You know, I've lived in the area the whole, my whole life and uh, you know, 
I played for the Western Springs Swan soccer team, which is the, the local soccer team, and uh, only only natural thing was to go to Ponsonby. We're talking with Ali Williams. Don't forget you can uh, be a winner too with the High Performance Hour. If you go on Facebook or go to our website, hph.co.nz, answer the quiz question. Very simple question. We want you to have a crack at this. What year did uh, Ali Williams make his All Black debut? Uh, we've got a prize pack uh, for you uh, for one lucky winner. So go to our Facebook page uh, or the High Performance Hour, hph.co.nz, and link through like and answer the question, and you're in the draw to win that question. So... What year did you make your All Blacks uh, debut, Ali? I can't give it away, can I? Of course you can. That's what we're all about. We want people to end it. We want them to have a crack at this. But oh. it, <laughs> eh? it's, a very, it's a very simple quiz question. Let's make them like, do some research. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you want them to yeah, research. Yeah, you want oh, them to cool. research. Cool. I mean, it's, it's, it's not right. hard, is it? Uh, all right. Well, it'll, 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 it'll come out in the wash. Now, well, yeah. I've kind of mentioned it um, in terms of the maths, if people yeah, can yeah, figure yeah, that yeah. out. But yeah, uh, no. um, you talk eleven years. You, you talk. <laughs> you talk about those setbacks. And and how they they help you uh, uh, through. Not all players react that way, though. Yeah, you know, what was it in you that made you react? I mean, these days in modern professional sport, you know, I think of a, the example of footballers. I mean, they get dropped for for ten minutes, and they they want to transfer. They want out of the place. You know, people don't show that resolve. So, what was it you think in you that that you showed that resolve? Um, look, I'm a, a passionate person about the area I, I don't don't make any secret I, I love Auckland and I, I love the place um, I love the All Blacks and I think it was just that desire or that burning desire to to represent my country um, and to I suppose be part of a a team that could, could bring a World Cup back to the country um, towards the end that became a bigger focus but at at the start, it wasn't. It was just about me playing um, good quality rugby. At the end of the day, you, you've got so many people that help you. You know that if you if you call it short, then you're letting them down as well as yourself. And for me, I just I, I couldn't do it. Um, I, you know, I, to be honest, I probably was in, my, in the form of my life in 2008, coming into 2009, and when all those injuries struck, it was. I mean, it's been hard to handle. My, my career and stats-wise would be totally different, but it is what it is. I've had a great journey. I've learnt a lot. I've um, I've had time out of the game to appreciate the game, um, but I've also I've also learnt that who are true friends um, over those times, and um, and life's not easy. Um, I think you know maybe we live in a little bit of a bubble. Um, in the rugby world and in the sporting world and, you know, to be outside of that and looking in, I think, um, makes you appreciate it a lot more. Yeah, so, I mean, it's a bit of a cliche, but when it's taken away from you, when, when for, for, for a time there, you simply couldn't play for physical reasons and maybe there was a thought in the back of your mind, I may not play again. So does that make you appreciate what you had? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I went into the last, the third surgery on my Achilles with... Um, my surgeon saying, "Look, Ali, I, I don't don't know the result. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to walk properly again, or, or, or run, or even play the game. And it was just a risk I was prepared to take, or wanted to take to to get back. And look, I'm, I don't want to make any folklore story about the whole thing. It was what it was, and I just I just got a desire to wear, or have had a desire to wear that black jersey and and do it proud. And you know, even though." The fairy tale didn't roll out in terms of me starting and having a, you know, being the player of the tournament or and all that sort of stuff in the World Cup. I, I still believe that I was there for a reason and 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 it was good and you know I feel like I pursued and and ticked off a, a dream. So that yeah. oh, was good fun. Ali Williams, our guest on the Hyundai High Performance Hour. Just want to explore the the, the whole um, from a young player. It's not just about the rugby, of course, during this era. It's about coping with this word professionalism and and I've heard all sorts of horror stories about uh, uh, young rugby players who were amateur and playing for the All Blacks and they went through that transition period suddenly the professional game came in and we had essentially young kids with time on their hands and more money than they could ever have dreamed of Mm. and some of them went off the rails How, how did you cope as a youngster Realizing this was a career, it wasn't just a sport. Now that you loved, it was a career. It was a way to make money. Yeah, I've never looked at it as my career. I've looked at it as um, a part of my life. 
in terms of it's a stage of my life, so there'll be other things behind it, um, and, and I've got to grow into it. But, um, you know, if the truth... The truth is, it's it's your upbringing, it's your family. Um, you know, my my I couldn't ask for better parents. They're very grounded. My mum was was on me like there's no tomorrow if, if she didn't believe things were going right, and um, you know, wanted to give me that that grounding, so to speak. And my dad, he, he encouraged me to do do anything and support me. So um, look, I mean, for young guys, it's it is professionalism and it is dangerous if you don't. Um, Appreciate it. It's like going out in the ocean. Mm. And if you um, don't have those people, because some of them don't have that family support system. They don't. It's hard. But um, I think more than anything, you've got to learn early on in your career to, one, is ask for help, and two, is admit that you're not always right. And, um, you know, I think a, a lot of great rugby players fall over because, they A, they don't think that they're, they're wrong. They think they already know the game. And, and B, they can't say, look, look, actually, I don't know, and... Can you help me? Mm. And um, well, that's not unique to rugby either, is it? I mean, no. uh, you see it in all sports. No. And um, but we, well, look, I think on the field, I think we we embrace professionalism a lot quicker than what we did off the field, and I think we're slowly starting to starting to catch up in terms of professionalism off the field. If you've got a text question for uh, Ali Williams, text it through to five double o nine. Back in a moment with more as we talk about his uh, career with the All Blacks, but of course his ongoing career with the Blues and Auckland Rugby. Summer motoring's hard on any transmission, but if you catch problems early, there's less trouble to fix. So get into Casper Transmissions for a free 10-point check now. And if it does need work, from a simple service to a full recondition, Casper will offer you New Zealand's best warranty. Casper Transmissions, Otahu, Glenfield, and now in their new store in Silverdale, phone 0800 Casper NZ. Phone 0800 Casper NZ, that's 0800 Casper NZ. It takes a pallet of paint 2.6 seconds to fall 3 metres from a forklift. And during that 2.6 seconds, as the paint fell from Jason's forklift, he imagined the worst. He would get fired, go on the dole, kicked out of home, living on the streets, rob a bank, end up in jail, sharing a cell with a big fat hairy man that, like young men, of course, none of this happened. Jason's boss had a flowstone floor coating put down, and the floor is stupidly easy to clean. Get a flowstone floor coating on your factory floor, and you could almost eat your lunch off it. In fact, that's exactly what Jason did. He dropped his pie at lunchtime. Well, it was a steak and cheese. Visit flowstone.co.nz and never have a slip up again. County's Toyota for the drive of your life Around town, on the farm Down the road and back, off the beaten track County's Toyota for the drive of your life Could be work, could be leisure We've got the wheels to make the journey a pleasure County's Toyota for the drive of your life Go to counties.toyota.co.nz the Black Caps Tour of England. Thursday morning at 1. It's the third one day out. From the Trent Bridge in Nottingham. <laughs> Radio Sport Loud for ball by ball action. The Hyundai High Performance Hour. Proudly brought to you by Hyundai New Zealand. Taking uh, your text message uh, questions as well for. Uh, and listen, someone's put me right here, um, and and I may well get put right here, and I, and I should have asked you this. Is it Ali or Ali? It's Ali. It is Ali. Yeah. Okay, but I don't. I just sort of go with the flow now. I mean, it's been twelve years, yeah. thirteen years, whatever it's been, um, in the media and Ali and Ali. because it's for Alexander, isn't Alexander's it? Alexander's my proper name. Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. Does yep. anyone still call you Alexander? Uh, one person. Your, your mother. Mum. My father. Oh, your dad. Oh, mate. When he loses the jandal, it's Alexander. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. He used to trace me around the backyard with a spade. <laughs> ah, now we're getting to the motivation. Uh, yeah, okay. New Zealand or not. Okay. <laughs> Ellie, you talk about your passion for the All Black jersey. Can you talk us through your, uh, your first experience in the All Blacks when you first got named in there and then receiving that coveted jersey? What was it like for you? Yeah, look, I, it was. Um, Way back in 2002, when I, I received that uh, that jersey, and um, the naming was quite special because I was I was with the whole Auckland team. We had won the championship that year, and I was with them. And to be with guys that had helped me get there was was pretty special. So uh, I was with them, and then you know you go in, and the whole thing is just a blur. It's just so unreal. You, you you're running around with superstars. I mean, Jonah was in that team, and you're just looking at 
yourself going, do I really need to be here or should I be here? And then um, once you get out in that field, you're, uh, the emotions are just massive and for some reason it either people either freeze, they try and fight their way into the jersey or, or they just um, they hide. And uh, for me, it, uh, for some unknown reason, the black jersey fitted well and it came naturally and I just I loved it. It, it brought the best out of me and I still remember... Uh, not sleeping a hell of a lot the night before because I try to remember the actions of the hucker. I'd never done the hucker before, and that was my biggest fear. So I got through that, and then we had the national anthem, and I had my um, my grandparents there, and they held up a sign, and it says, uh, Ali Williams from Scotland for New Zealand, and this was two rows in front of the Queen. It was sort of blocking her view, and... Um, I, once I said that, I said nothing else can embarrass me from here on in. So let's hook into it. Because your your first test was against England. Yeah, against Twickenham. England and Twickenham. Um, the Queen was there, and you know, a lot of the royal family were there. And the best part was my grandparents were there, and you know, unfortunately, mum and dad couldn't come over, but uh, they were there, and they've been a big part of of my life. And um, as I said, I, I got a English Scottish background. And uh, yeah, it was it was quite special. We, sorry, I just well, one burning question: Where's your first test jersey now? Um, I think it's at Dad's house. It could be at my house, um, or it could be at Mum's dress up box. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's not a word of a lie, actually. She did ask yep. to borrow a jersey. Um, and yeah, no problems. And the old man, being the old man, you know, he's he's that damn useless at organising things. Um, I th- think he gave her my first test jersey to. Go to a party and, Fancy and dress. I was like, "You're a moron." <laughs> did they uh, they symbolise them then, or um, uh, does it mark the them? test match? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah everything's everything's, everything's yeah. embroidered. Um, the best the best part about that game was actually walking off, and unfortunately, we lost. I think it was Andrew Hoare and I's first game, and we we fell short at a lineout, which wasn't the first one or <laughs> wasn't the last one we fell short at. But um, we lost just by two points, I think it was, and. Um, End of the game, Martin Johnson walked off the field and said, you know, you, you, you're going to be pretty good one day, kid. And, um, and he gave me his jersey. So I had I had both of them together, which is uh, it's pretty cool. So you, you talk about the different reaction of players that, that some, and again, this is applicable to all sport, that to put players in a pressure environment and some some feel that uh, that expectation as it lifts them, you know, it, it, it gives them confidence, it drives them forward, but others feel like, like, a, like a burden, like a weight on their shoulders. Yeah. Um, but you, you say that you just never felt it wasn't a burden to you. You just almost were born for this sort of an environment. Yeah, I mean, the more the more people don't expect me to do things, I think the bigger I strive. And um, you know, that is one of the biggest challenges of, of being a professional athlete regardless is can you embrace the pressure of being in the public eye and and standing up in front of everyone and saying, I failed? And uh, I think if you can do that, then you can have a great career. If you can't do that, well, then you're scared of the unknown. So you don't want to put yourself out there and say, look, I'm, I'm going to win or I'm going to set that challenge. Um, but, I mean, I've always looked at it as pressure's a privilege. Uh, I just feel so privileged that people, you know, put the trust in me and, uh, and let me play. So so literally, how did you deal with it? Did you have a pre-match routine from, from the moment maybe you arrive at the ground? Did you have a pre-match routine that I'm sure you were nervous like, like others, but how did you deal with it physically, mentally, before a game? Yeah, I... I... Through the years, they changed. Um, the one thing that probably hasn't changed is my pre-match meal, chicken, mashed potato and spaghetti. Um, but, you know, I just keep changing things. What what sort of mindset do I need to be in? You know, and you evolve. As the more you play, the more you find that I need to be in this mindset rather than that mindset. And it's just about, um, as I said, it's, it's being able to put yourself out there and saying, look, I, I'm prepared to fail and does it work, does it not work, and trying things and, and things like that. So, um, did, you, did you see an analogy with the All Blacks over your career that uh, perhaps in uh, 2003, 2007, there was still a fear of failure rather than looking to embrace uh, a, a victory and that in 2011, it looked to me like the leadership group within the All Blacks, the coaching staff included, they'd mm-hmm. been through 2007, that they'd learned from those lessons but uh, we're, we're making the right decisions in those pressure moments. And, and gee, it, it seemed to me like sort of at times around that two, 2007 time that in a pressure moment, 
some All Blacks were maybe going, wow, what are they going to be writing about tomorrow when I, when I get this wrong, rather than saying this is what I need to do mm-hmm. to win this game. Did that change over the course of four or five years? Oh, look, the mindset changed um, in the All Black environment from, from day one right till, till my last day in it. Um, yeah, look, we, I, I don't think it's any secret in 2011 we embraced it and we said, look, well, I mean, I publicly said I believe we're going to win and, um, you know, you can take my house if we don't. And it, rather than walking away, we, we did say, look, that's what we're here for and that's what we want to do. And in 2007, 2003, I think probably were a little bit younger, a little bit more naive and thinking that it's just going to happen. Um, I remember 2003, I mean, no one could get in Kui of us. We, you know, mm. we played Tri-Nations. We beat some of those teams by uh, all the Africans and both the Australians by 50 points. Um, but we we were just we just went through the motions. I don't think, and we didn't have that mental toughness, um, which which the team I think's got now. Uh, Richie McCaw, text question coming through here. Tell us about Richie McCaw, uh, the rugby player. Um, oh, that was lucky but, to clarify uh, that, wasn't it? Well, no, yeah, but they, was, they, was, they, it, was they, it Richie texting in? They yeah. do well. We can check the number. Uh, they do suggest also uh, um, the man, the leader, Richie McCaw. You know him pretty well, don't you? He's a, he's a yeah, I know, him, I know him very well. We, you know, we got businesses together. We've got, um, you know, we've we've had a lot of memories together, and you know, they're, they're still going to go um, regardless of their. They're not going to be on the field anymore. But um, yeah, the watching the growth of him has been pretty special. I think he's, as a human being, he um, he's not he's not scared to fail. He he does put himself out there, but he does it in a in a very humble New Zealand type of way. Um, and his, I, I think to me, it's his dedication and his sacrifice that he's given to this country. No one will really really know apart from a few guys in and around the environment um so yeah i mean for me i, I can't speak highly enough about him and it's quite hard to talk about him because he's he is such a good friend but uh i think without without him and the team i don't think we um we would have shone as as much as we did not saying that there's there's 14 other guys that did most of the work he just he just picked up the trophy at the end of the night uh, another question on text. There's dozens here. We're not going to get through them all, but I'll uh, I'll pick and choose a few of them. In ten years' time, have you got a vision as to where you'll be, what you'll be doing? I've got a vision. I've got a dream. Um, my 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 dream of promoting this country um, is still alive and kicking. Um, how I want to do that is through through products and creating a company, um, which you know we're. We're in the stages of doing. Do I get the result? I don't know. Am I prepared to, to work and give everything for it? Yes. Um, but look, I, as I've always said, rugby was just a part of my life. It still will be a big part of my life, but I, I don't see myself coaching or or staying in the game in a playing type of level, maybe in an administration type of level. I, you know, I could see. I, I like the commercialism in terms of, how do we best harness that? Because um, if you if you're an All Black supporter uh, and you travel around the country, around the world, you'll you'll realise how powerful that jersey mm. is. A question here from Kerry: um, How much of an influence on your attitude to coming back from your injuries uh, has your father's injury been on you and and seeing what he's been through? Yeah, pretty big. Um, look, I still remember the day that he walked out. Um, to go to the concert. He, he fell on some stairs at the Ericsson Stadium concert uh, 17, 18 years ago now. I still remember that day very vividly. Um, and for me, it just made that mindset that you live every day to the fullest. You you, you just embrace every moment. You know, you, you get no regret. or well, you have no regrets. You just live your life. And the irony of it is that I went and started playing rugby, which is a contact sport. And, you know, it can all change in a minute. But, yeah, I think I think it's probably a big part of, of the person that I am, seeing him go through those injuries. Uh, one here from Mark. Congratulations on a sensational career. Uh, what would you tell a young person aspiring to be the best? How do they get to the top? Is there a list there? Are there a number of boxes you've got to tick? Or there's no magic bullet, is there? There's no magic bullet. I think um, it's the dedication, but it's also the mindset. Where Do you really honestly deep down believe that you want to 
want to be the best and will be the best. And if you do, then I think you're halfway there. If you don't and you doubt yourself, then you know, then that's half the battle. But it's like the things I said before. You know, don't be fair, don't be scared to fail or, or ask for help. I mean, it's. I don't want you to name names. You might want to. Uh, but uh, have, have you seen players? Have you seen players that you've thought, wow, what an amazing player, brilliant, but they haven't brought that mental attitude and they've either gone from the game or not achieved what they might have? And conversely, have you seen players that you've thought, mm, not sure that they've got the skills, but because of the mental fortitude, mm. they, they make it? Uh, I think, you know, if, if we're going to be brutally honest, I think you look in Auckland, we've got 75% of the the catchment pool in terms of talented rugby players and you know results we're not we're not capturing them um I, i've seen and played with some freaks and they'd be the first people that i'd say would be all blacks and they haven't ended up being all blacks um you know no disrespect but um you look at conrad smith um tony woodcock i mean you put them in the gym they they're people. Yeah. They're people. Yeah. You put them on a rugby field and they're they're inspired humans that, that have the ability to change a game and it, it's purely their mindset. It's their ability, their desire to know that they'll never give up. And um that's just two that we all publicly see. Mm. Um you know, I mean Conrad honestly he shouldn't even have a gym membership, should he? <laughs> Like, seriously. He's a bit unorthodox, isn't he? Yeah, he's very unorthodox. Yeah, he spent, what's yeah. he, he spent more time in the books, though, hasn't he, to be fair, early in the career. Is that, is that yeah, the problem, do you think? He did. But, I mean, he is growing into be one of the greatest centres yeah. that this country's ever produced. Um, yeah. you know, if he goes to the Green Party, I'll be highly disappointed. <laughs> We're talking with Ali Williams on the Hyundai High Performance Take the uh, mic off me. More, more, more in a nano. We keep going. We're back in a moment. My new fridge. My home entertainment system. Whatever the next big thing in your life, buy it online on Layby with mylayby.com. Very flexible, very convenient, all the advantage of online and Layby, plus free delivery. My honeymoon. My baby. My new computer. It's the best way to get those big things in life. Make your Layby mylayby.com. Mylayby.com. Here's a few questions for you. Just answer, yeah. Or nah. When you meet up with friends for a couple of drinks, do you find it hard stopping at a couple? Yeah. Or nah. Do you sometimes get up in the morning after a heavy night and have trouble remembering what happened the night before? Yeah. Or nah. Has anyone ever had a word to you about your drinking? Yeah. Or nah. If you think you're answering yeah a bit too much, maybe we can help you say nah a bit more often. Call the Alcohol Helpline on 0800 787 797. For a luxury bathroom at half the price, see the team at DIY Bathrooms. They do plans, products and give advice that's guaranteed to save you thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. An IVO Vitreous China Toilet Suite with soft closed seat is the best looking close couple toilet on the market with a five year warranty, now only $199. DIY Bathrooms, 18 Piranha Road, Glenfield and 8 Car Road, Mount Roskill. Baby girl, off to England for the first time. Dad, stop it. You'll make me cry. And if you cry, then I'll cry. But I know you'll be with Brian Waddle every step of the way, so that puts my mind at ease. Brian Waddle? Radio Sport presents the Black Caps Tour of England. The third and final one day is from Trent Bridge in Nottingham. Thursday morning at one. And we've got ball by ball action live. That's the best delivery of the day. The Black Caps Tour of England with Wads. Keep Radio Sport loud for all the action. The Hyundai High Performance Hour with Andrew Dewhurst. Proudly brought to you by Hyundai New Zealand. Now, don't forget our quiz question if you uh, like us on Facebook and you can get to our Facebook page from our website, hph.co.nz. Answer our very simple question. What year did uh, Ali Williams first play for the All Blacks? Uh, answer that question. You're in the draw to win our prize pack this week. Uh, final few minutes before we let you go and support the uh, Maroons. Maroons, mate. Maroons. What were they called earlier tonight by some of the Maroons? Maroons and it was pointed out that that is a biscuit. It that? is a oh, that is a biscuit. A muppet earlier. But uh, anyway, anyway, enough about that. Um, in terms of uh, your your role with Auckland rugby, with Blues rugby, you've you've, you've touched on it here tonight. You had the spell away mm-hmm. to the Crusaders. Um, they haven't won a championship since and, then, by the way. I do like telling 
um, what, what do you call yourself here? I call him Puffer Fish. Yeah. But he calls he's got himself, a few nicknames. He's, he calls he's the himself, night watchman so, here. The night watchman here. The night watchman. Yeah, I do keep telling him that. Yeah. But, uh, <clears throat> That's all right, man. When did you last win one? 2008. <laughs> In the Blues. When did you last win one? Oh, 2003. Right, right. Yeah. Long time between drinks. Yeah. Anyway, still drinking out of it though, Chief. Anyway, <laughs> your your passion. <laughs> I could just you know ding ding and get out of the room. <laughs> your your passion for blues rugby runs deep, doesn't it? For yep. Auckland rugby. Yeah, definitely. Uh, just this place, this region. I think the people in it, uh, are special types of people, but it's also the the many cultures that we do have up in Auckland. Um, look, I think. For me, I, w- I would love to see the Blues win a, a title again, but but also have a franchise that people are proud of and they can support through thick and thin. And you know, if I can if I can help that, then I'd I'd love to. But um, at the end of the day, if if I can't, then I think once again it's one of those things that you say, how how can I still help it, um, whether it be on the field or off the field, and. Um, I, th- I think, um, you know, as you say, you've got to have a passion, and, and my passion is this region and this country. A couple of quick-fire sort of questions here now. Greatest moment in the game for you? Um, I mean, you can't go past that World Cup victory, but also, I think, uh, first Lions test. Yep. Uh, yeah. Toughest opponent? Uh, Victor Matfield. We had some good ding-dongs, me and him. Yeah, and was it a, was it a, a great battle with plenty of respect though? I mean, did it ever? Get, oh, huge get respect. I mean, we 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 still talk to each other. Um, we you know we we went out to uh, to get one over each other, kill each other almost, but yet off the field we we're, we're great mates and and have a lot of respect for each other. I mean, you know, I just look at at the career the guy had. He's he's a special human. Um, greatest All Black might be putting you on the spot here that you've played alongside, and and you can qualify that in any way you like. I've played alongside two that I think are, are great All Blacks at the moment. Um, one is Richie, which you know, I've talked about, um, but I think the other one is, is Dan Carter. I think his ability to to read a game, his ability to change a game at the drop of a hat, but also his 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 ability to stay human, and by that I mean stay a New Zealander, stay grounded. Um, I mean, look at you. Some people would argue that he's not—he's the face of of rugby in the in the world, and for his ability to still be a mate and come and have a beer and just be generally grounded, I think he he is a great All Black that gets overlooked. So, what's in the future for you in in the short term future? Uh, obviously, this year is is a continuing campaign with the Blues uh, beyond twenty thirteen. What's yeah, what's on the horizon? Sure. Um, we're not too sure. I'm 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 in talks with JK about about playing again next year for them. Um, but uh, look, I, it's about doing something that I can help help another te- help a team, you know. And if it's the Blues, I'd be I'd be honoured and, and grateful. But um, it's like anything; you know, it's still up in the air. There's there's all that contractual side of things to do. But um, crystal ball gazing, to be honest, I still I'm still going to play the game. I still love the game, so I'm still going to play it. But um, how many more seasons I got? I'm, I'm not too sure. And um, you're a dad now. Yeah, I'm a dad. It's, enjoying that, mate? Is that... Uh, uh, it's pretty special, yeah. It yeah. changes your life. I think it, it really does, the way that you look at the fact that you've brought another life on and, you know, you talk about leaving a legacy in a black jersey or leaving a legacy in a, in a blues jersey. Well, actually, the only legacy that you really leave, I believe, is probably your kids and, um, you know, to, to give her all the good points that I've got but also to give her some of my bad points, I think, is, is the whole package. I think that's that's really what what everyone's legacy is. Good stuff. Um, we could talk for another hour, but you wouldn't let us because no. State of Origin no, starts origin in about a no. quarter of an hour's time. If I don't support Queensland, then uh, Big Bad Brad gives me a phone call and he doesn't get too happy. So, oh, uh, Brad, give you a call. Good stuff, mate. Appreciate your time. Well done on a, a wonderful career. And uh, and I know there's still more to come, obviously, uh, in Blues and Auckland rugby, but uh, well done, mate, on a, a fantastic all-black career. Thanks for having me. Ellie Williams with us on the Hyundai High Performance Hour. Back in a moment to wrap things up. Aero Park's special deal this month, just $5 a day for six days or more. Aero Parks gives you personalised service with secure allocated parking on Tarsil. Minutes from the airport and a luxury shuttle delivers you direct to the terminal free. 
$5 a day for six days or more all this month. Drive in, take off. aeroparks.co.nz That's A-E-R-O Parks dot co dot nz Wouldn't it be nice to make the house warm, dry and cosy for winter? Maybe a heat pump, perhaps one of those home ventilation systems or even just help to handle some debt. Want to get onto things around the home? Talk to Avanti Finance about their tailored financial solution for homeowners called the Freedom Loan. Contact your broker or call Avanti Finance on 0800 003 111. I want Avanti and I want it right now. Normal lending criteria apply. Visit avantifinance.co.nz. Holden have secured a scoop purchase of 2013 registered Holden CD Cruise diesel sedans and hatchbacks. Just $27,990 drive away. Delivery case only and a choice of colour while stocks last. Save $9,000 off retail on these top selling models with attractive finance options available on site. Details at scofield.co.nz We're still Schofields after all of these years. What's on the telly these days? Well, that one's got an energy rating sticker. That's not what I meant. What then, a price sticker? I suppose it could be that, actually. The new model LG plasmas are in. The 50PN model, full HD plasma, has built-in free view for only $799. And the 50PH model is full HD, 3D smart, with Time Machine, 2G built-in and Skype ready. It's a fantastic buy and at just $1,695. Magnus Benro, three stores Auckland-wide. Radio Sport, New Zealand's only 24-7 sports radio. That is the uh, Hyundai High Performance Hour for this week. Uh, Our thanks again to... uh Ellie Williams for joining us on the show. Bit of an insight uh, to uh, what makes him tick. He's a fascinating character. The bottom line, though, is that he's uh, been a great rugby player, uh, in my opinion, for this country and for not just his province of Auckland, but for Canterbury as well when he was uh, there with the Crusaders. Don't forget our website is hph.co.nz, hph.co.nz. Go to our website. If you've missed the show, you just tuned in, ready for State of Origin, which is coming up after 10. You can listen back to the interview with uh, Ali Williams um, on our website. So that's a new feature that we're uh, bringing to you this year on the Hyundai High Performance Hour, hph.co.nz. Our quiz question, very simple. What year did uh, Ali Williams make his all-black debut? Enter on our Facebook page, like and enter, and if you get it right, you're in the draw to win our prize this week. That is another edition, though, the Hyundai High Performance Hour. The news is fast approaching, and after the news, it's State of Origin Rugby League.